Ladies and gentlemen, Intel's Meteor Lake S is dead again. This thing has been revived and killed again more times than Goku from Dragon Ball. But it seems now that Intel have decided to just simply release Arrow Lake for the 15th generation. For those who missed the previous updates to this, I'll quickly go over it. The 13th generation, of course, is Raptor Lake, with the 14th generation being Raptor Lake Refresh. There's no major architectural improvements other than things to increase the clock frequency, and the mid-range may see a small bump in core count so the highest end SKUs are going to retain the same core count but maybe a small bump in the mid-range but the 15th generation would be bifurcated with the lower end um, products let's say the i3s and i5s that's to my understanding anyway comprised of meteor lake s and arrow lake being the higher end products let's say i7s and i9s but this was a little confusing for a couple of reasons while they would still be on the same socket there would not just be the core counts which would separate them as you can see on screen um, from my own personal slide it's slightly outdated now because meteor lake is uh, most likely dead at least for desktop there would also be well ipc differences between the two architectures as well so if you were to take single thread performance for example and equal out the clock frequency well basically arrow lake in theory should outperform it but this has been one of those products which has been revived and killed revived and killed multiple times over now at least what one writes you here is saying anyway it seems to be dead but only for S. So basically, this would be for enthusiasts. So for the sake of argument, you will still be able to buy uh, Meteor-like products for, let's say, the laptops. Now, there hasn't been a reason given, and actually there's more confusion here, because Xeno, as you can see in the replies here, is stating that it's renamed, not dead. Now, the reason that this is also confusing is because this apparently has just happened. In fact, it's the latest roadmap, and you can see on screen yourself. Unfortunately, the majority of the roadmap has been blanked out, which is a bit of unfortunate uh, news because obviously it goes up several years into the future. Now, if I had to speculate the reason, it's probable because, well, Arrow Lake is, of course, going to be the lower core count configuration now. Let's say, for example, the 6 plus 8 configuration that we could see here on screen from Raichu. But also, it makes sense from the perspective of they would, of course, be competing with Zen. So I think it would probably just add a lot of confusion to the marketplace. However, if Xeno is right, it's still alive, but I don't quite know how. I'm reaching out to some sources to maybe get an update to this, but unfortunately, because again, this has only just started to circulate with this updated roadmap at the moment, it's still a bit of a mystery. So I'm putting it out for you guys, and I find it really curious, actually. I would personally have preferred a simplified roadmap anyway, because again, the fact that you would have IPC differences, like core count differences, fine, obviously that's part of parcel of life, you know, seeing like cache differences and even some clock frequency differences, fine. But when we start to get into more complex things like, well, you know, IPC differences, it becomes a whole different ball game. But speaking of ball games, well, actually absolutely nothing to do with balls at all, other than, well, the 4060 Ti and the 7600 may actually suck them, at least compared to what our hopes and dreams would be, we actually have some benchmarks which have emerged i'm not going to read out all the results because videocards.com did a nice comparison here and they have all been equalized with the 100 percent representing the 4060 ti and you can see that essentially speaking you look at a 10 percent difference between the 4060 ti and its predecessor the 3060 ti and as for the 7600 it is basically a couple of percent faster than the 6650 XT, which actually matches my own leaks that I've uh, put out a couple of times. The only difference is I was told at the time the name for the card would be the 7600 XT rather than the 7600, but of course at the time names had not been finalized and I did say that it was possible that they could have changed the names. And this could also be said for the uh, Fire Strike results as well. I'm not going to re read through all of them here, but for example, Fire Strike at 1080p, we have basically around 33,600, uh, uh, 33, let's round it up actually, for the 4060 Ti and the 3060 Ti. I, meanwhile, is around 29,500. So it's not exactly a big upgrade for those who have already got a 3060 Ti. It may be more palatable for someone who has, let's say, a GTX 1060. The only problem is with the 4060 Ti, you've only got 8 gigabytes with this particular model, 
and the 16 gigabyte model is, well, more expensive, according to NVIDIA. Meanwhile, the 7600, well, it's probably gonna be around 300 US dollars. There have been some leaks recently which seem to indicate this is true. And again, this is a price point I've said a couple of times before on the channel that uh, we're gonna be seeing these prices. Honestly, it's a little expensive because the 6650 XT, it pretty much does everything. Like it's not 100% confirmed at this point that let's say FSR three will run on the some oh, sorry on the RX 6000 series. AMD have said that they would like it to, but obviously like it to is not the same thing as hey guys we've got it running. But um, yeah, I mean I don't know. It's it's a situation where the card is not bad, it's not a terrible card, but I think the 7600, in my personal opinion, would be probably better at like 250 bucks. Um, and the 4060 Ti, again, if it was like maybe 30, 50 US dollars cheaper, it would have been arguable. It seems from the leaks, that the sorry, it seems from official confirmation that the 4060 may be better in terms of pricing. Um, one thing I have heard from a source is NVIDIA are potentially considering doing a last minute price cut or shortly thereafter maybe doing some type of rebate or something like that i personally wouldn't bet on that at this point because honestly it's not like amd are particularly being aggressive anyway with their pricing so this is a set of cards that honestly i am a little disappointed with all i can say at this stage is that um if you've already got let's say you know a previous generation card I, I I would probably stick with it. Honestly, the 6700 XT is not that much more expensive, although it is more expensive, of course. So it's it's a very interesting situation we've got. Um, I don't personally think that uh, these cards are exactly going to set the world alight, but hey, we'll wait and see on that. Okay, guys, I think that's just about it for this particular video. I just wanted to do this quick update, particularly given the uh, Intel news. I found that particularly interesting, actually, the fact that we're possibly not going to be seeing Meteor Lake from Intel. I personally feel that that is probably going to be the right decision, just from a confusion perspective from, uh, well, end users. But uh, we'll have to wait and see. With that said, take care of yourselves. Have an amazing day. Bye for now.